Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with what I am currently playing on Last Epoch. So if you watch the streams over the past few days, you'll know that I was leveling a uh, Warpath Void Knight. I have actually scrapped Warpath because I found something a lot more enjoyable for me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and run a quick map and then kind of explain the character to the best that I possibly can. Just know for the sake of leveling, I recommend you honestly kind of pick whatever skill you want and level. I leveled with Warpath. Um, there's a weapon called Dreamthorn if you want to go void based. That is pretty easy to find. Uh, it's this right here, but honestly you could insert, pick up two-handed weapons, craft your affixes and kind of just go. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm currently in a level 90 timeline and I'm going to go ahead and just run this area right here to kind of show you guys. Okay, um, so on here we have like mobs do double, well not double damage, but like 30% damage and 30% damage, and that's pretty much about it right now. So I'm going to get started. Uh, I use Anomaly for self-buffing, Lunge for, for mobility slash a little bit of damage, Volatile Reversal is really only for bosses, so you won't see me use it often. My main clear is Eraser Strike, my main single target is Void Cleave, but they both kind of go together. So let's get started. Uh, what I like to do is take my cursor and hover over the edge of the screen to make sure that you're like lunging as far as possible. Stand down or die. <laughs> so the combo is essentially, if you look here, Void Cleave, a Racer Strike. Void Cleave, a Racer Strike. Now, if a target is tanky, like say this bear right here, you can go ahead and like lunge, Q, E, Void Cleave, a Racer Strike. Void cleave, erase. So your volatile reversal makes it so your hits are a lot more chunky. So for example, if you see this little thing right here, I'm gonna like uh, boom, boom. I don't know if I can actually. Yeah, the, the problem is the mobs here are kind of too squishy, and I don't have a boss set up right now to show you. The boss damage is pretty good. It's definitely not like super crazy. To me, it feels pretty good. Uh, I like this character a lot more than the Warpath character because the sustain feels much better with the leech that I have, right? Because when you're hitting these like big chunky hits and you have like 10% life leech, you just have this really nice buffer that kind of just keeps on bouncing and bouncing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run another one since that was like really, really short. Let's get some actual gameplay. Okay, here's like an arena. Here we go. This is perfect. Void Cleave, Eraser Strike. Now, a big issue that you're going to have when you start this character is your mana. So, if you'll notice, when I pop my Anomaly here, uh, we actually have this spec to give us a ton of crit chance. The reason that that's really good is because whenever Void Cleave crits, we get three mana back. So, this gives us really, really good sustain when mapping. But when you're bossing, you're going to want to rely mainly on mana regeneration itself. Um, and for that reason, it doesn't feel as bad because on a boss fight, you're not just sitting on the boss the whole time. You've got mechanics to dodge, right? So while you're dodging those mechanics, you have essentially time to regenerate mana. You could also, if you want to play slower, you could totally drop lunge and use like rebuke for mana. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can go about it. Currently, I'm still trying to get more mana region on my gear, and we'll talk about that after this. But the character plays really, really smooth. I would also like to put a big emphasis on the fact that the damage you see now is not actually the damage ideal. I do a lot more damage, it's just you can't really tell. So Void Knight is built around echoing. So for example, if I like, if I just randomly slash like over here, right? You see that clone right there? That clone does like two times my damage, but you can't really ever tell because the mobs are dead. That's why the boss damage is still pretty good because majority of your damage comes from your echoes. Um, which is just really good, right? And you have enough damage that when you're mapping, you can usually one to two tap most mobs. Some people like to use Volatile Reversal for mana gain. I personally don't like using Volatile Reversal because it's kind of tricky to figure out where your character is two seconds ago, right? I pretty much just go on a boss, press it to debuff the boss, um, I usually wait like a second or two, right? But I don't have to keep using it in the middle of a fight for mana. I pretty much would like sit on top of a boss and then use it. So example, say this is the boss, right? I just got to the boss, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, boom. Those AOEs you see overlap and make the target take increased damage. All right, let me go ahead and uh, let's go into the character. So first off, let's talk about the skills. So lunge. 
Uh, lunge, you will have a lot of mana problems with if you spam it. The reason that I have Lunge is because I just like to clear quicker. It has some nice synergy um, with essentially like ready or not makes it refresh your uh, cooldowns on your Eraser Strike and your Void your uh, void Cleave. It's not a really big deal because like mine, for example, has like a 2.4 second cooldown, right? Um, we make it so our Lunge is Void based, so it does bonus damage. Uh, I have two extra charges on my lunge over here, and then you'll notice on the left, I basically have physical pen. If you take the void node, it gives you void pen. Nothing really too crazy, but this is my lunge. It's for mobility. This is the most flexible piece that you have. So, Eraser Strike. A lot of different ways to play it. This is currently what I ended up with. Essentially, with Eraser Strike, uh, if you saw the AoE on it, it has giga, giga AoE. So, uh, this is my main bread and butter for clear. Uh, let's talk about what we do. So... With a Racer Strike, uh, I went over here to the right first to take the guaranteed crit multi. And the reason why I took the crit multi is because my Void Cleave guarantees that my Eraser Strike crits. It's hard to see, but it's the little bottom bottom left node here. However, even though our, vo our um, Eraser Strike is a guaranteed crit, I still want to spec into base crit, and here's why. When I do my combo of Void Cleave, Eraser Strike, there is sometimes a clone who also wants to Eraser Strike. That clones Eraser Strike, right? Uh, what it what it essentially does is, I guess it's called a Racing Strike. I have a Eraser, whatever. Anyway, uh, that clone does not get the guaranteed crit because you just use your Eraser Strike, right? So it already crit. So that's why I like to scale a bit of crit to try to scale the echoes specifically, right? Uh, moving on a little forward, um, basically you can see I took damage here with Kill Threshold. It's mainly just for the damage. Um, this I took for cooldown recovery and damage because I kind of spam it. Now that I'm using swords, um, this implements of destruction based off if you're a two-handed mace, sword, or axe, you get AoE, CDR, or damage. Um, I'm currently mace, and I think my eraser strike's actually too short of a cooldown. It's 1.9 seconds. I try to sync it up with the Void Cleave. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty much what I've got. Um, obliteration works well because... Um, a racing strike has a 450 uh, percent effectiveness of damage so flat damage works out really well with it so that's pretty much this skill uh, i do not go for like time loop with shattered continue whatever this is called because this makes it cost 60 mp on top of its cost and that's just that's too much for me so i don't go with that route um void cleave now uh one thing to talk about a racing strike is body armor rolls plus one a racing strike and a Void Cleave rolls on your uh, Sentinel Relic. My Relic is really shit. Um, I cannot wait to get a new Void Cleave one since Void Cleave is kind of the main skill. So here's what I've got for Void Cleave. Um, the first thing I did is I went down towards the Erasing Strike crit. I put all points into Rift Maker, all points into the crit multi. So these are very big. Um, I don't know what this is called, but this basically makes it so enemies cannot dodge it. This helps a lot when you're running your monolith for mobs cannot dodge, or mobs do dodge. This makes it so you always hit them. Very, very good for your consistency. You're going here anyway. Um, Crushing Echo synergizes really well with your clones because you get a huge amount of void damage, and the effect is tripled for your echoes. So very, very big. Um, I've got points into Into the Depths. They're kind of like fluff because I'm still figuring out exactly what I want to do between Abyssal Walker, Into the Depths, and Dark Pathway for cooldown reduction. Okay, next up is Volatile Reversal. A lot of different things you can do here. For the most part, I'm full CDR, so Time Lost Vitality and Time Lost Wisdom give you insane CDR on your Volatile Reversal. Now, a big thing about Volatile Reversal is you'll notice that it has these like pulses and the pulses are these void rifts the reason these are important is a target hit by a void rift takes 30 percent increased damage and then when you have this node that makes two void rifts right so you can see here two void rifts right so essentially when you're on a boss you will anomaly void rift and then you will void cleave into a racing strike if you manage to get another charge on a racing strike you can do the combo twice Again, there are a lot of different ways that you can kind of specialize this. I wanted something simple for me, uh, since I don't really want to play like this mini game as I'm playing my character. So this is kind of what I ended up on. Now, Anomaly, for me, there's not really much flexibility here. So essentially, um, Anomaly no longer needs enemies to be sent forward in time. Essentially, Anomaly has many different ways you can use it. For our instance, all we literally do is like click the target and we get a buff. So this bubble is where all of the, the buffs come from. So essentially, 
we can inflict time rot on characters, which has some synergy with with uh, some of your stuff, but I'm not going to talk about it too much because all of this is automated. Um, you get a time bubble. The time bubble shreds their void res. The time bubble gives you big crit. Now, remember, you're getting 150% crit, and then if you remember looking back, a racer strike has big base crit, and void cleave itself, we get base crit from here, and we get huge crit chance. So that's like 150 plus the 150 on your... Um, anomaly is already 300% increased crit, right? Uh, I take time bubble to... Oh, shit. I actually need to spec back into this. Somehow, I, I guess I had a piece of gear that removed it, so I'm going to have to actually go full into time bubble. Um, time bubble effect lingers. Uh, time bubble is cast on you, so you don't have to worry about, like, trying to stand in the time bubble. It just follows you. Uh, I got attack and cast speed here. Uh, essentially, leech and leech speed. All right. So, going a little bit forward now, I'm going to talk about my gear and some importance of stuff. So, I have found that for me, the Hollow Blade is an insane base weapon. The main reason is it gives melee damage, which becomes adaptive into Void because we're Void based, so it's a lot of Void damage along with penetration. Now, my weapon, I don't like how it is. An ideal weapon would have melee critical strike chance, Void damage, and then um, I would like to say all attributes with reduced damage taken while wielding a two-hander. The reason for the reduced damage taken while wielding a two-hander is you can completely ignore all critical avoidance to my knowledge, so that's what I'm kind of aiming for. The reason for flat void is if you are using dark stride, you get a lot of movement speed from them and just because of how like a racing strike scales, right? So that's, that's where I'm trying to go with right now. Uh, this is huge. The reasoning for the uh, base crit is because if you don't crit, the build is gonna feel bad. So you might get more tooltip by, you know, adding something else. But if you don't have big base crit, your skills are just going to feel really inconsistent. And when you're mapping, because you're spamming your void cleave so much, you might end up going oom. Um. Whereas when you have the base crit and you, for example, have uh, this node here, you will constantly keep refilling your mana, which makes it feel really good, right? Okay, uh, going a little forward now into the gear. Um, my helmet, it's kind of really up to you. I've stacked a little bit of cooldown recovery to make the build feel better. So that's basically by using this augury helm with two times opal ring. Let's talk about that in a minute. So helmet, ideally, I think strength, echo damage. And then I was trying to get flat health, percent health. Uh, amulet, I was looking for void damage, void pen. Crit, I think, is okay too. Void pen is very big. Again, I was looking for health. Uh, I ended up sealing mono regen because you are going to want mono regen on this build. Uh, mainly for when you're bossing. My body armor, I just recently lucked out into an insane body armor. It, it's rigged. Uh, remember that because we are a Void Knight, our skills scale with Vitality and Strength. Vitality is also defensive. Strength is also defensive. Vitality gives you HP and a little bit of damage. Strength gives you armor and a little bit of damage. So I've got a 15 Vitality plus one Erasing Strike uh, with Necrotic Res Health. Ideally, I would like hybrid health or percent health instead of that necrotic res i don't like it at all but i also have a sealed affix for 100 percent echo damage um just i literally just got this the build works totally fine without this i like got this 10 minutes ago uh my belt i don't like my belt at all it's got mono regen and void damage which is ideal remember mono regen is very important uh, and it's got endurance and crit avoidance i don't want the crit avoidance at all uh, i would much rather have like elemental res or even health for example on my belt uh, rings. On rings, I'm going for a combination um, of getting resistance on my suffixes, right, that you can kind of see. Um, resistance and health. My prefixes, I think the best would be strength and mana regen. Instead, you can play around with, like, strength, critical strike chance, mana regen, void damage. Those are all good prefixes you can kind of add. Remember that strength ends up becoming defensive because it helps scale your armor, which ends up helping you mitigate a lot of damage. So going on to the Relic, uh, Relic is pretty big, and the reason why is you can roll Void Cleave on here. So for me, an ideal Relic is like Strength uh, plus the Void Cleave. And then for suffixes, I'm not really sure what I want. Frailty helps a lot with bossing, but I don't know how consistent we hit to apply it. So this is kind of up to you. I'm still trying to figure it out. There are also, there's a really, there's a good Relic that's minus three mana cost on your attacks. <clears throat> Sorry, the reason why that's good is Void Cleave is an attack, a Racer Strike's an attack, and I believe Lunge even. So every time you use one of those skills, it's minus 3 MP, and it has mana as a base, so that's pretty nice. 
Darkstride work out really well. They give plus one charge to Void Cleave, and they end up scaling your movement speed based off your Void. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of Void because I don't have that roll I want on my weapon. Uh, so that's something I'm kind of aiming towards. So that's, yeah, that's kind of like in between right there. Uh, my gloves, I don't really know how I feel about my gloves. They were made when I was Warpath. Essentially, they have uh, AoE and melee attack speed. I feel like strength just wins. You don't need that much attack speed. The build feels fine, and you get attack speed buffs from, like, for example, Anomaly, and I think even my Lunge. So I don't know what I could roll, but for sure I want, like, I want strength 100%. As for my suffixes, <clears throat> hybrid health health would be really, really nice. All right, so that pretty much covers this. I'm going to go ahead and glance on my idols real fast. Remember that idols are a lot of filler. They're trying to fill in stats that you're missing. A lot of people are going to use idols for resistances, for example. One big thing I can state is finding Vitality Idols with Void Damage is really nice because Vitality is a defensive stat and an offensive stat. So having these Idols are not bad whatsoever. Okay, and then the last thing to talk about is the actual character tree. So... When I first started leveling, I would recommend Overwhelm because flat damage really helps a lot. Um, but this is pretty much what I have landed on. I also think that this point is completely useless for me because I don't think I even have block chance. So, uh, yeah, not sure about that. I'm probably going to put that back into Vitality. Armor Clad helps a lot with mitigating damage. Uh, and then, of course, Valiant Charge. I spam my movement skills, so I really like it. If you play a little bit slower, it might be better to go Fearless. Now, in the Void Knight tree, there is a lot of stuff to be talked about. Before I continue this, I do want to state that if you are struggling with resistances, Paladin has Defiance. That gives you Ellie Resin Attunement. Attunement gives you 2 MP per point, so it's also not necessarily bad, right? So this is an option as well. I'm going to remove these points when I get more res so I can go back into Void Knight. Void Knight has a beautiful passive that says, <clears throat> For each point spent in Void Knight, you gain 1% crit multi. So with Void Corruption, I currently have 73% crit multi. This is also why it's not it's not saying crit multi is bad at all, but why you can kind of skip a little bit of crit multi because you get so much crit multi from this. Not to mention the fact that my Void Cleave gets 200% crit multi from the tree itself, right? Okay, let's go back into it. So I'm just going to talk about what I have gotten. I'm not necessarily going to talk about everything or else the video is going to be far too long, so... Abyssal Endurance to help cap your uh, Void Res and your Physical Res. I wanted to go more points into Temporal Corruption, but it's only two flat scaling per, so I prioritize Resistance right now. Uh, World Eater helps a lot with Leech, making the build feel better. Uh, one point into Void Corruption. All points into Void Blades because it's three melee damage per point and not two. Remember, Melee Void can help giving you movement speed with your Dark Stride. Uh, I've got Finality. I don't even really know if I like it for the Melee Kill Threshold, but my Erasing Strike also has it, so this is still questionable. It makes Clearing feel a little bit better. Uh, I've went into Woe, uh, 5 points, <clears throat> which basically gives me melee void damage. Uh, melee damage and armor while I'm mapping helps a lot. I've went fully into Echo because Echo is kind of how all my boss damage is, is applied. So full Echo into here. Um, I've also got Future Mind. Future Mind, I keep adding points and removing points based off of how the mana feels. So this is a nice point or a nice uh, thing you can kind of dump points into based off of, you know, if you feel like your mana sustain is crap, you can dump points into Future Mind, right? Uh, I've also got 10 points into Eternal Form because it's busted and I really like it. Um, so yeah, I mean, that pretty much summarizes my character. Um, there are a lot of different weapons you can use. I just want to kind of focus on using a rare weapon, mainly because of that reduced critical damage that you can get. That That's kind of really, really awesome. And that pretty much summarizes everything I could tell you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox, except for Sundays. Uh, I'll try to put a last epoch builder in the chat as well. So don't forget to go ahead and look at the comments. See you guys all tomorrow, and thanks for watching.